Do you remember Newton's first law of motion, which qualitatively predicts how objects behave when forces are balanced and unbalanced? But the second law will tell you how the net force and the change in the state of motion are mathematically related. Well, let's understand in more detail. Our objectives are to understand Newton's second law of motion and to understand momentum with examples. We've already seen in Newton's first law that a body does not change its state of rest or of motion unless acted upon by an external force. In other words, we can say that the change in motion or acceleration of a body depends upon the force acting on it. But the first law does not show us how acceleration of an object depends upon the force acting on it. Whereas Newton's second law gives us the relation between force and acceleration. Let's understand a little about momentum. If a slowly moving cricket ball hits a person, it would not hurt him or her much. But if the ball is moving at a high speed, it will hurt him or her severely. The differences in both the cases is the velocity of the moving body, that is, the ball. Now, if a person is hit with the tennis ball, the impact is once again less than that caused by the cricket ball. The difference in this case is the difference in mass. With the help of these examples, we can define a new physical quantity called momentum. The momentum P of a body is defined as the product of its mass m and velocity v. The SI unit of momentum is kilogram meter per second. Let us see another example to understand momentum. Take two marbles with the same mass. Hold the first marble at a height of two meters above the glass top of a small table. The marble has no initial velocity. Release the marble. It attains a certain final velocity and hits the tabletop with some sound, but does not break it. The other marble is held at a height of five meters. Its initial velocity is also zero. Now release the marble. It attains a much larger final velocity than the first marble when it reaches the tabletop. This marble hits the tabletop and breaks the glass at the point of impact. Let us now take two marbles with different masses, that is 10 grams and 100 grams. Both are released from a height of 3 meters so that they have the same final velocity at the point of impact. We observe that the marble with greater mass breaks the glass top whereas the marble with less mass does not do so. Hence, we infer that an object having more mass or traveling at a higher velocity possesses greater momentum. Now, with the help of momentum, let us understand Newton's second law of motion. Newton's second law of motion states that the rate of change of momentum in a body is proportional to the unbalanced force acting on it and takes the direction in which the force acts. Consider an object having mass m, which is moving along a straight line. Its initial velocity is u. Now an unbalanced force f acts on the object, which is uniformly accelerated. After time t, its final velocity is v. The initial momentum of the body is given by p1 is equal to m into u. And the final momentum of the body is P2 is equal to M into V. Here, the change in momentum of the body in T seconds is given by P2 minus P1, which equals MV minus MU. Therefore, the change in the momentum of the body in one second is given by MV minus MU by T that equals m into v minus u by t. 
We know that the change of momentum in one second is nothing but the rate of change of momentum. Hence, the rate of change of momentum equals m into v minus u by t. That's equation 1. According to the equation of motion, v is equal to u plus a t. Therefore, a is equal to v minus u by t. Equation 2. Substituting the value of equation 2 in equation 1, we get the rate of change in momentum is equal to ma equation 3. We've already seen that the rate of change in momentum is proportional to the unbalanced force. From equation 3, we can say that ma is proportional to the unbalanced force, which can be denoted by f. f is proportional to ma. This expression can also be written as f is equal to k into m into a, where k is the constant of proportionality. Now, assuming that a unit force acts on a body of unit mass, thus producing unit acceleration, we find the value of proportionality constant k to be equal to 1. Substituting this value of k in the above equation, we get f is equal to m into a. This is the mathematical expression for Newton's second law of motion, which gives us the relation between the force acting on an object and the resultant acceleration produced in it. That is, the force acting on any known mass can be measured by finding the acceleration produced in it. Let's summarize. The momentum P of a body is defined as the product of its mass M and velocity V. The SI unit of momentum is kilogram meter per second. Newton's second law of motion states that the rate of change of momentum in a body is proportional to the unbalanced force acting on it and it takes the direction in which the force acts. Newton's second law of motion gives us the relation between the force acting on an object and the acceleration produced in it. Imagine a truck and a motorcycle moving with the same speed. Do both require the same force to stop? Think from the point of view of what you learned in this video. We'll discuss the last but one of the most important laws of nature in our upcoming videos. Keep imbibing. We believe in you.